In this video, you will learn about applying design of experiments in industrial bioprocess development and why design of experiments is a key tool for scale-up processes. You will learn through a case study about 6-aminocaproic acid biosynthesis in Asherichia coli and how the authors were able to obtain a five-fold increase in production by co-varying both genetic and environmental factors together. You will see how discerning the interdependencies of genetic and environmental factors early on with design of experiments is critical to reduce the time, cost, and number of experiments for strain development and scale-up. Alex is a researcher in a startup that aims to develop novel drugs in the well-studied yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae. The novel drug is a metabolic compound from a rare plant species that is very costly to grow and cultivate. The approach to produce the drug in yeast is an alternative and cheaper method to reduce the cost of the drug and increase global supply in a sustainable way. To produce the drug in an industrial scale, Alex set out to first develop a prototype yeast strain that can produce the drug in a small lab scale setting. Once the yeast is able to produce the drug in a desired titer, the prototype strain will be grown in a larger bioreactor for scale-up. Optimization in these processes are highly significant to ensure production cost is low while maintaining high quality of the product. Alex will first focus on developing a prototype strain. This involves construction of a library of candidate strains, which is then screened to obtain the best performing candidates. Strain engineering involves many genetic parameters and requires the selection of genetic parts to control the expression of each enzyme. In this step, optimization occurs at the genetic level, and Alex could spend weeks or months to build a library of strains before screening. It is significantly longer to develop strains in comparison to the time required for screening. Screening of candidate strains are usually done in a lab-scale environment under a single set of conditions. The best performing strains are then selected to be optimized further for growth in a larger bioreactor. In this step, environmental process factors and media components are considered and optimized to increase production tighter. While this production pipeline could be successful, it is also high risk. If the strain fails to produce enough titer during this second step, Alex may have to start again from scratch and develop a different strain and repeat the whole optimization cycle again. Furthermore, there is growing evidence that different strains are favored under different environmental conditions. Changes in media nutrients, buffer pH, cultivation temperature, and aeration can all influence cell physiology and metabolism. In other words, the prototype strain that Alex optimized at a genetic level in a lab-scale setting may not perform the same way in a larger bioreactor where environmental conditions may induce a bigger effect. It would have been ideal to combine both optimization steps at the genetic and environmental level together. However, it is difficult for Alex to attempt the strategy from the start because the time required to generate candidate strains far exceed the time needed to screen and test a large number of production parameters. This mismatch is one reason why these two optimization steps are separated in industry. However, Recent scientific advancements have significantly reduced the cost and time of building large strain libraries. Automated genome engineering has also advanced, where thousands of strains can be built in a few weeks. This has greatly accelerated the development time for strain engineering and have opened up the possibility to screen different strains under different media and environmental conditions to discern the interdependencies of these two factors early on in the pipeline. Design of experiments, or DOE, has long been used as a powerful tool to help navigate and choose the best combination of parameters that will identify the main factors that contribute to the production process. Furthermore, DOE can provide statistical information 
on the interaction between genetic and environmental factors, which would not be possible without changing both parameters together. The use of design of experiments to investigate both genetic and environmental factors have been studied by Zhou et al. in 2015. The authors used DOE to optimize the production of 6 amino caproic acid biosynthesis in Escherichia coli as a proof of principle. 6 amino caproic acid is the linear form of caprolactam, which is the building block of nylon 6. Nylon is the most highly produced synthetic fiber globally, and bio-based production of the polymer has the potential to emit 91% lower greenhouse gas emissions than the fossil-based chemical process today. The biosynthetic pathway to 6-aminocaproic acid can be achieved through the expression of 6-heterologous enzymes. Aside from optimizing the expression level of these enzymes, the author also included three media factors in the DOE design, ferric citrate and cysteine, vitamin B1, and the magnesium ion. These were chosen because they either serve as precursors to catalytic cofactors for pathway enzymes or potentially increase cell growth. Altogether, there were six genetic factors and three media factors in the design. A fractional factorial design with 32 runs was chosen in the screening experiment. There are two different levels for each factor. Plus one indicates a high value or strong promoter, while minus one indicates a low value or weak promoter. Once the results have been obtained, a regression analysis was performed on the data to determine the factors that most influence the titer. A quadratic polynomial model was used to estimate the response curve. From this analysis, vitamin B1 was shown to have the strongest positive effect on titer. Furthermore, the regression model predicts a genetic system and media composition that is optimal for 6 amino caproic acid production shown under optimal coding. When the associated genetic construct is built and evaluated in media composition that only contains vitamin B1 and magnesium ion, the strain yielded a five-fold higher titer than the base level. The authors then conducted a second set of experiment. This time, only the genetic factors were evaluated and screening was conducted in a single media composition. With only six genetic factors, the authors used a full factorial design comprising of 64 runs. Once the constructs have been built and tested on standard TB media, the same identical analysis was performed. Interestingly, the authors found that when compared to the previous experiment, for some factors, opposite slopes are predicted by the analysis of the two datasets. This leads to different predictions in the directions that the expression levels should change to further optimize the system. For example, when media changes are not considered, one of the enzymes, AKSF, should be decreased. But if media can change, then it should increase. This example shows why covarying both media and genetic factors is critical to accurately guide the next iteration of constructs to build. Separating the optimization for genetic and environmental factors would have led to the construction of a strain that would have turned out to be suboptimal. This case study is a simplified representation of what a scale-up process looks like. In industry, there will be more than six genetic factors and three media factors. It is important to remember that design of experiments is simply a tool to screen and optimize a process. The choice of factors to be tested and studied depends on you, the user, and domain expert. The use of DOE in laboratory scale-up processes have been made possible through advancements in DNA assembly coupled with improvements in computer-aided design and a decline in DNA sequencing cost. These innovations have reduced the time gap between strain construction and screening and allowed the co-variation and interdependencies of genetic and environmental factors to be discerned early with DOE. High throughput strain construction also enables more exploratory experiments, which is an essential principle of DOE. Altogether, 
This can significantly reduce the time, cost, and number of experiments for strain development and scale-up. For more information and learning about DOE, you can click on the description below which will link you to one of our STIPS module. STIPS is a free online statistics course developed by Jump that you can take and learn on your own pace. We have a dedicated module for DOE, which will dive deeper into the terminologies, experimental designs, and analysis for your experiments.